So I had to get equally as talented with each finger separately. Mm -hmm. So I would do exercises like... And then okay, I would so go through... That yeah, so what I'm quick. doing is a hammer-on from the fourth to the fifth fret, mm -hmm. and I'm using pick on the E string, finger on the, like middle finger on the A string, pick, finger, pick, finger. And then I would come back with a flat pick. But then what you do with this exercise is you use, I kind of use it as a warm up exercise mm -hmm. before a show. So you go one and two, one and three, one and four, two and four, and three and four. All of the combinations. All of the combinations. So you're warming up your left hand while you're warming up your right hand as well. Mm -hmm. But what I would do when I was younger is practice that whole little exercise with uh, the pick and the middle finger, and then I would do it all again with pick and ring finger. Mm -hmm. So my nail, you know, would actually like, so. So that's all with my ring finger. Right, right, right. But now that I have acrylics, folks, I don't have to worry about that. However, I still use that scale to warm up. It's a great warm up exercise. And of course, as I was doing that, you can hear that the pick and the finger have the same tone. So there's a, there's a really nice pop. So it's getting the pluck of the string is really what causes that to happen. And then of course you add some steel guitar to it, buddy, and you're in there like Flynn, so. There you go, there yeah. you go. Do you have any, ex I know you have an ex that exercise, which mm -hmm. you, you're doing kind of individual yes. strings. Do you have anything where you're doing the combination of you know pick and then Both ring fingers. and middle? Yes, and actually there's an exercise that I teach students on how to du use double stops, which double mm -hmm. stops are just two notes played simultaneous. Uh, simultaneously. So what you do is you play an A scale, okay. you know, like we can, we play it the normal way, mm -hmm. right? But then you play it horizontally this way. So you can go. So I'm playing the A scale, but I'm going down the fretboard. Right, in thirds, yep. Yep, in thirds. And essentially, guys, there's a little number pattern you can remember. It's one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one. So when I say that, I'm using the first position, which is a bar. So you go first position, which is a bar on the G and B string, second fret. Mm -hmm. Then your second position is fourth and third fret. Then you slide that up to. So now you're six and five, bar on the seven, bar on the nine. So there's your one, one again, mm -hmm. right? So now we're on 11 and 10, 13 and 12, and then a bar on 14. Now, uh, what you can do with that is I used to practice single picking, double picking, and triple picking with ghost notes on the bottom. So you could go, like the single picking would be. Or you could double pick it, so which is down, up, pull. And you're just, for the ghost note, you're just using your third finger, just kind of lightly touching that fourth finger. Right, you're, you're just deading in, you know, you're just using it as a dead note. Right, right, right. Ghost notes are just kind of dead notes that float on the bottom. But they're very, very important in chicken picking because mm -hmm. ghost notes are, you know, they're felt, not really heard. Right. You know, so then I would triple pick. So I would go down, up, down, pull. So. And then as you get more involved with it, you can do stuff where you bend the note in the same scale. So you just bend the G string down. And then you get this. Okay, so you have the bend down, I saw on the first finger. Mm -hmm. What do you do on the two one combination? Just, well, that's actually where you do a half tone bend. Of, there's kind of a, a neat way of remembering half, you know, half tone bends as well. Mm -hmm. So you have a half tone bend here. Okay, so you're right? bending up your second finger up right? a half step. And then this one, you do a whole tone bend. Which to is the bending next up scale the whole tone. tone. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then. But see, I'm not bending the B, I'm bending just the G. Which then, that's incredibly hard to anybody who knows. <laughs> well, when you got a little meat on, when you got steak fries for fingers, folks, you can do it too. But just remember, there's only two halftone bends in that A scale. Yeah. 
So you, you know, actually play the second one is a half tone, then a whole tone, whole tone, whole tone. And so right after the fourth, or which is the D of the A scale, right. then you have another half tone, then a whole tone, and then the real hard one, which is the second fret bend. You have my undying respect. Anybody that could bend a whole step on the <laughs> third string, second fret, those of you at home, try that, and, just, and then you'll see. It is dirt near impossible. I have students, man, that sit there and they look like they're fighting, you know. Because you know, oh, it is, it's not easy to do. While we're talking about that, now that you've mm -hmm. shown the exercise and you've shown the little bends, put mm -hmm. that into a musical uh, context. So if you're doing a run or a lick or something and you wanted to incorporate something like that, spin well, that in. I love that when I'm actually in a solo and I work my way up mm -hmm. using my high-low low high pattern that I've talked about many times on this show. Yeah. Um, but if I get up high and I need to get down lower in a very fast way, mm -hmm. I use those. So okay. if I'm doing like a... Like a really a quick way to get down the fretboard man which is just and i call down this way folks going back this way right so talk about that we actually even had a question about that the um high low low high mm -hmm. um, concept of when you're trying to build a solo so essentially all the high low low high pattern is uh, or you could call it low high high low however you like to do it yeah but essentially you start it's wherever you start your solo uh it could be in a low position or a higher position but say I was going to start a solo for you, and so say we were playing that kind of... Kind of Eliza Jane thing, right? So if I start low... So I'm going to stop you right there. Where did I end? I ended right here. So a flat seven note and a major third, right? right. So if I want to get to D, and this is the where my lick finished in A, I started low and went to high, but I ended here. So then I would say, okay, well, how do I get into D from this area going low to high? Now I want to go high to low. So I said, well, if I'm going to go high, that means I need to get to, I have a D right here, right, right next to it. But I said, man, if I'm going to go high to low, that means I want to get to an area in the D scale where it's comfortable for me to work high and then go low. So I would reach up to the major third of the D scale. So, and what did that lead me to? An open string scale that I love a lot. But what just happened right there? I went high to low and then low to high again in the same key. Mm -hmm. That's okay, because there's no rules. Mm -hmm. I was making them up. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you can go back uh, low to high again in the same key, but where did I end? I ended on the, G, on the D triad. Yep. So that means I could... And then here...